Hi, hi everyone. Now we are live. Sorry about the wait. And I'm heading over to Mohammed. Mohammed. Great. Thank you very much, Anastasia. So a very warm welcome to everybody for joining our, uh, our virtual conference today. Um, I will just kind of quickly give you an overview of some of the things that have been happening in the NSSR community and um, um, and some of the things that you you can kind of look forward to uh, um, in the next year or so. Um, so just before I kick off, um, just just be gentle with us. This is the first time we're trying to do this online, and uh, you know we're delighted with all the interest that that, that has been generated. Um, uh, so uh, we will obviously there'll be lots of things for us to learn, but uh, but just so bear with us, please. Um, there will be some housekeeping stuff, which uh, if Anastasia can still hear me, I'll ask Anastasia to go through, please. Um, otherwise, I'm going to end up talking about a little bit about the community, something about the NHSR Academy, and give you some insights into the NHSR annual survey and the results from that. Anastasia, will you do this, or should you want me to do the housekeeping? Yes, no worries at all. Uh, so, yeah, housekeeping. Um, I can see some messages, people can't have sound. So if everyone can please make sure uh, you're from Google Chrome and you're not on your VPN, then uh, CrossPass will perform the best. Um, and uh, hopefully everyone can still hear us and see screen. Um, please participate in the chat. I could see very nice chat when people said where they're from. Uh, please make sure you are being active in the chat. Um, we're still active on Twitter as well. Um, you can see there is hashtag, which is same as linked to this uh, um, to this uh, um, web page, so it's NHSRConf 2020. Um, yeah, on Slack, if you are not on Slack yet, I believe you can use this 10 URL link to join us. Um, we have session time, and we also wanted to make sure that um, everyone is nice and polite uh, in this uh, uh, conference software. Uh, we have the uh, opportunity to ban people, so please uh, be nice to everyone else. <laughs> um, and yes, Mohammed, if you go, please to the next slide. I can show some. Uh, okay, great. So just just a reminder that everything Crowdcast works best with Google Chrome. So if you're if there's any kind of stuff going on that's not quite working for you, if you can try and relaunch things using Google Chrome, that should help. I think. Um, okay. Yeah, so you can see now that uh, you can chat it on the bottom right corner. Hopefully, everyone already found it. Um, so next slide, please, Mohammed. Yes, uh, ask a question is uh, below uh, under the screen. So you can ask a question. And also, uh, Mohammed, if you go to the next one, uh, you can see that while, once question is asked, uh, you can also vote on the question. Um, and uh, I think the last slide is uh, about the drop down menu. Yes, yeah, so now we are all in session one. Uh, when session two starts, you will automatically pull into session two. But also, if you want to move the sessions yourself, you can also uh, click on the drop down menu and choose the session you wish to attend. And I believe this is everything from, from me today, Mohammed. So, but okay, thank you very much. Uh, so we have got lots of sessions, but really, really interesting, exciting people have agreed to talk to, uh, at the conference, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I, we're conscious that there's a lot of screen time in conferences, so we, we, we've tried to put in an extended break uh, kind of from the morning to the, to the afternoon. But if people feel like they do need a comfort break, then, you know, just kind of help yourselves, really. Uh, it's, it's, um, uh, we're conscious that a lot of screen time uh, um, nowadays. So if I just go back a little bit now to kind of content, really, these are two landmark reports from the Health Foundation, which really kind of set out this, the stall on uh, on analytics in, in, in health and care uh, and really made the point that we could do a lot, uh, a lot more um, uh, with with analytics. Um, and uh, one of the things that, that um, we felt was was a potential asset to enhancing analytics was uh, really the, uh, promoting the, the, the use of R in the NHS. So uh, for those of you that don't know, but you know, R is powerful and continue improving. It's ranked amongst the top 10 programming languages. It's free or low cost. There, there are wealth of online resources. It's widely supported. And, and there is a, an NHSR community really, which is, which is um, why why the the conference is such a big thing really because so many people do contribute and and, and join um so so what, the case for r is actually uh, quite a strong one 
Um, and what we basically did with support from Health Foundation funds is really kind of uh, encourage a bit of a an arranged marriage really between between the NHS, uh, which is uh, an institution which is very very loved, uh, and also uh, R, which is very popular. And what we've tried to do is trying to bring the two things together into the NHSR community. Um, just to give you a sense of what the potential of this community is, really, this is from John McIntosh's blog in 2018. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure there's enough brain power in the NHS to tackle any analytical challenge, but the challenge is harnessing that power, promoting R as a, as a tool, that, an incredible tool that it is, and in, enabling us to work collaboratively rather than silos. So, so there are technical as well as non-technical challenges in here. Uh, and what do the NHSR community want to do? We want to offer a, a very supporting, welcoming environment that's that's you know uh, consistent with the values of the NHS actually. So there's no kind of criteria for that. Uh, and in a technical world, I think we should point out really that we're just as warm and welcoming for for people who are completely new to R uh, as well as those who are kind of uh, more experts. Um, we do want to train, uh, kind of we estimate there's about 10,000 data, data scientists uh, in the NHS analyst. We want to train them in data science using our, um, and we want to develop what we're calling, what we're describing as five solutions per year for the NHS. I'll give you a quick, a better insight into those in a, in a moment. It is useful every now and then, I think at least once every three or four years, just to remind ourselves what the, what the NHS constitution uh, says really, uh, about it's being a comprehensive service available to all based on need, not ability to pay and so on. It, these are these are uh, fantastic principles. And um, and I just wanted to kind of reassure people really that the NHSR community uh, can be kind of substituted in each of those um, bullet points. Uh, we, we subscribe to the same principles uh, as the NHS. Uh, and therefore, I, I think that kind of uh, gives us very strong foundations uh, by which to kind of move forward. How has the community progressed? Well, in 2018, we were, we were fortunate enough to have funding from the Health Foundation, and that's really the kind of birth of the community. And one way to track our progress is really by the annual conferences. So you'll see what, this is our third conference now here. But um, uh, in 2018, we had a one-day conference face-to-face, -face, uh, about 120 delegates. The next one grew to a two-day 300 delegates and we've now got a virtual conference this is week two uh, week one was workshops week two is kind of more plenary sessions um, and over a thousand people have have uh, have registered so we're, we're delighted by that really but there's still there's still more to do and more more that we can do I wanted to again feedback to the community really that that uh, the, the the use of R in the NHS and and the NHSR community is actually being noticed um, there was a piece on an online uh, online media outlet um, in December about how R was being used by uh, uh, by the NHS um, and uh, Ben Goldacre, who's, who's we're delighted to have talking later today, uh, and many of the colleagues uh, worked together really to 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 to, to write a position paper on on how we bring NHS analytics into the 21st century. And one of the examples that was cited was the NHSR community. So really, a, a, you know, a big round of applause to everybody who's contributed. Uh, to the NHSR community in whatever shape or form, no contribution is small, uh, every contribution is, is hugely valuable. And just to give you a sense of some of the contributions, this is our website and uh, uh, one of our, our, our latest kind of uh, members of the community uh, has written a, 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 a blog on setting up an NHSR book club. Um, and this started with some discussions on Slack and so on. But you know, just to just to give you a sense, really, that the community is very agile. It kind of goes wherever the momentum is, and some really interesting things emerge as a as a result of that. Um, we do hear occasionally, and, and perhaps um, uh, you know, it's it's a it's it's a repeated uh, uh, observation that that we need support from leadership and management, and and um, here are the sort of things that I think leaders and managers uh, who might might be at the conference or or kind of uh, we touch base with, um, we would like them to remove policy barriers to the use of R. Uh, so that basically means uh, saying it's okay to use open source software. Um, and I know that there are discussions with NHSX, particularly uh, as well as NHS Digital, to try and kind of uh, address this issue. But removing policy barriers is really important. 
we also recognize that analysts need time and space to learn. That's really, really crucial. The notion that they can just squeeze everything into their day job is not realistic. Um, and they do need uh, good, good quality protected time to learn. But they, they will find that there is a, a wide community out there that is here to support them. So this is not a, a kind of lone journey that there is, there is support and, and, and uh, very friendly support at that really. Um, we would also encourage our leaders and managers to, to develop an environment where, where sharing is the norm. Um, uh, if you think about the, um, the evidence-based um, healthcare that we have through, the, through NICE, the National Institute, uh, they review the evidence to produce guidelines. And those guidelines are made free to everybody. Um, th th there isn't a kind of uh, uh, holding back of that knowledge, really, and we also should share all the all the work that we can we can possibly share uh, that um, that we develop using R and, and uh, um, uh, R for, for for data science and in, in healthcare. And just the last point, just don't don't kind of become selfish. Um, you know, uh, the, the the irony of this is that sometimes uh, most of us are using free R resources to develop stuff. Uh, and then somehow um, leaders or managers want to try and kind of commercialize it in some way and sell it back. Uh, and that just seems to me like the, uh, something that we really need to be uh, discouraging because there's a lot more to be gained through cooperation and sharing than being uh, than kind of behaving like a selfish cost center. So so the NHSR community is um, is is this kind of amazing thing but it has it has these two invisible pluses they're not included in the logo just yet but but uh, they have always been there the plus for the nhs indicates that the nhs doesn't sit in isolation uh, recent uh, events have made it very clear that the nhs is part of a wider system particularly with with social care the local health authority public health uh, there are many other government or public sector institutions which would contribute and support the NHS. And so we, we see ourselves as being inclusive of that sector as well. And likewise, R, R is an open source tool, um, but there are other open source tools as well. And we're not, um, and you know, uh, Python is a, is a very, uh, uh, um, uh, as a leading one. Um, so we're not anti any of these things really. Uh, we, will, we will be trying hard to embrace things. And one of the things in the future is for me to try and work out a way of perhaps having a theme uh, at the conference to support uh, Python related uh, sessions and workshops. So if people have got suggestions about that, just email the, the, the community email address and, and we will kind of look into it. Some other things about how the community is organized. So there is a steering group, which Paul Strona chairs, who used to be the, um, the kind of uh, the lead for AFA. Um, um, there's a, a central NHSR team, uh, which uh, Anastasia, uh, Sharon, myself, we're kind of just three, four of us here who kind of try and look after kind of coordination activities. And we have a technical advisory group, which is um, chaired by Chris Beanie. Many of you will know Chris uh, for his uh, uh, books on Shiny. Um, so here is the NHSR community. Uh, there's lots of amazing individuals. Uh, there's a Slack channel to kind of promote communication. We've also got a a, a partnership with Hexatime, which will be uh, showcased later. But there is this virtual structure called the NHSR Academy, which is what I want to highlight to people. I, I don't think we've made this as visible as we, we should have really. Um, so um, the NHSR Academy um, will, will support uh, three main types of activities really. One is it will try and support the development of solutions that, that are our base that can be used in the NHS. And I'll give you examples of those in a minute. Uh, it should also be supporting NHSR user groups. Now I know user groups in terms of physical meetings have taken a bit of a, a, a kind of stalled really, but, but um, quite a few virtual activities are happening and we would be very happy to support uh, virtual uh, NHSR user groups as well as um, uh, kind of more traditional ones when we can, can safely do those. Um, and it's also there to support training on a, on a large scale, really. So, so um, if any of this, you know, interests you, or um, you kind of want to have more details, and just just get in touch with us via the email address on the on the website or the contact form that's there. And this is what, when I think of the community, this is what I see. Really, I see very, I see this amazingly beautiful picture, really, which is uh, which is all these individuals who are. Who are like stars doing amazing things, uh, and some some people's some star, some stars are very bright because they're very close and the light has reached us, and some stars are 
are, are further away the lights have yet yet to reach us through me but but everything comes together into this kind of very beautiful awesome picture of what the community is capable of doing really uh, and in that setting um, the academy identifies uh, a, a number of uh, fellows really so here are our our fellows. So fellows are people who um, have a, a port have a track record of expertise in R, and they have contributed their expertise, time, uh, energy to the NSSR community. Um, and this is really kind of a, a hopefully we, we kind of think of this as a badge of honor really these are people who have really contributed in big ways to the nssr community and what i would encourage people to do is if you think you meet the criteria of being a fellow uh, that is you know you've got a, a track record of exp expertise with r uh, and um, you're making contributions or you're interested in how to make contributions then do do get in touch with us really um we will uh, we will kind of have a process by which we recruit we kind of identify additional uh, additional fellows really it will probably be based on a uh, that you need a nomination from an existing fellow but but uh, i don't want to kind of create a bottleneck so so kind of just just reach out to me in the first instance through through the community email box but uh, just a big thank you to all these wonderful people who are part of the kind of astronomy of of the nhsr community and likewise we have people who um perhaps you know uh, a community needs um needs technical expertise of course but also needs um champions who kind of give energy emotional energy who can make personal contact to give encouragements and nudges and kind of offer support and reassurance and so on and and these are some of the people who've been doing that for the nhsr community in an absolutely uh, fantastic way really so again just to give you a sense really that the nhsr community is not only about uh, kind of uh, technical expertise it is also about kind of the networking and the energizing of the network and supporting people in all sorts of formal and informal ways and then sometimes we have people from outside the nhs the NHS, people love the nhs of course and and so um they support the nhsr community not because it's part of their day job but they just feel like uh, it's something they want to do really. So uh, we have uh, people from academia, Sean, uh, Gary, who used to be in the private sector, but now has come back into the uh, into the NHS. And a, a real shout out for Bauman. Bauman's a, an academic at the University of uh, Cardiff and has been uh, offering time series based um, uh, our courses uh, for about two years now for the NHSR community, uh, entirely free and, uh, and open to as many as we can accommodate really. So the NHSR Academy will develop solutions. So here are the solutions that are kind of work in progress at the moment. Um, so there's a, a free text analysis of friends and family tests, uh, which, which Chris Beanie is kind of working on. Uh, there's a package called Endominer for endoscopy reporting, which Sebastian Zeki first developed and, I, and Chris is kind of uh, helping to kind of uh, um, take it to a kind of a production uh, level. Um, Chris is also helping us with a shiny course in the Train the Trainer. Uh, which will be donated to the uh, to the NHSR community. Um, Chris Main is developing a funnel plots package, um, and Gary Hudson will be developing a a data dictionary for uh, uh, for R. Uh, and Richard Wood has, has submitted a proposal around a COVID model. Um, the, the to qualify for a solution, which we, we basically um, whoever's got an idea of something that could could be done in R, which would be of benefit to the NHS, uh, all they have to do is kind of send us a pre preliminary email in the first instance. We can then send you a form to to fill out. But um, the idea is that uh, uh, you're looking to 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 develop something which would take somewhere you know up to 15 days of development time, and we will we will. Um, we will kind of release people's programming development time at, at that kind of day rate. Uh, and sometimes if you have the idea, but you don't have the the, the kind of um, team uh, back at base to do the development work, you could propose the idea and we would we would outsource the development work um, as well, really. So, so this is just giving you a sense of the sorts of packages uh, or, or training solutions that are being developed uh, uh, on behalf of the NHSR community. Uh, and we also have a wishing well, which we'll hear more about uh, through Hexi Time, where, where anybody can put in a wish, really, which we will we will think hard about. Um, so that we're, you know, if you think about all the the people that are, are are on the call in the conference, how many things you will have come across where you think you know this is repetitive, this could only this should only be done once, uh, and if if only one person did it and shared it and so on. So I'm sure there's lots of additional ideas out there. Wow. 
we have an, an annual uh, NHSR survey, which we try and do just before the conference so we can present some of the results here. I'll just quickly run through some of those with you. Um, so we had 154 uh, responders, uh, and here are the kind of um, organizations that they're coming from. So we're really pleased that it's kind of the wider context for uh, the NHS. It's not all entirely NHS based, um, and it's commissioning out sort of the provider units, local authorities, also their public health and academia. Um, what part of the UK uh, did people uh, kind of fill out in terms of uh, responses? Uh, and again, you can see that, well, first of all, uh, it's great to have su such a presence from Scotland, so that's fantastic. But we've also got, you know, some people from Northern Ireland, some people from Wales, uh, different parts of the UK. So we're, we're, we're pleased, really, that, that um, our aim is definitely to, to follow the, uh, the UK footprint. Uh, and um, and it, is, it is reassuring to see a, a spread of responses. Um, I'm sure we could do we could do better in some areas, but nevertheless, it's still uh, it's still reassuring. So if you uh, and if you're in a particular part of the UK where you you think that you're not, you know, you want to do some stuff and you're not sure how to proceed, then uh, just again be in touch with the central team. Really, we will see what what we can do to try and help and and support you. We asked people uh, about the level of skill in R. Um, so over a third of people describe themselves as novices. Uh, and then, um, uh, the, you know, uh, approaching 45% and 20% uh, and, uh, kind of uh, intermediate or advanced. So we want to try and help make that green bar smaller by, by offering uh, training really uh, on a large scale. Um, but nevertheless, it is, it is still reassuring to see that the level of expertise that is out there. How often do people use R in their current job role? Um, on a regular basis, again, uh, about a third of people once a week, 25%. So we want this uh, appropriately, where appropriate, we want it to kind of increase uh, uh, appropriately. And those who say never, or uh, then again, if it's appropriate, that's fine. But uh, but if it's because of barriers, then then we need to address those barriers. So what are those barriers like? So here on the right hand slide, you can see um, what the challenges uh, that people identified in, in the use of R on a day to day basis. And the top three, lack of time, lack of skill, lack of IT infrastructure. And uh, we think that uh, obviously lack of time is where we need leadership to give time to, to analysts. Although we, I would also suggest that uh, if there are tasks which are repetitive, uh, and if we can find a way of supporting the doing of those repetitive tasks, then you can hopefully slowly, slowly claw back a few kind of uh, a kind of a portion of your time on a gradual basis, really. Um, lack of skill, again, the NHSR Community Academy should be really, really supporting people who feel that that it's lack of skill as the main the main barrier and leadership needs to open up the use of open, open source software, but we should keep banging the drum until that's done. I should point out a few people have security concerns. It's not such a, it's an easy question to, to raise with open source software, but it's not such an easy, uh, question to answer, uh, and at some point we need to kind of uh, kind of address these security concerns, or at least make them more transparent. And it might be something that the technical advisory group can can kind of help us with. We ask people about their training needs and what they use R for. So so essentially um, th these mirror quite a lot. So I'll just go through the training needs really. Uh, so quite a few people are requesting uh, R related uh, introductory level uh, training. Automation comes up quite a lot, which is great visualization and dash dashboards, which again R is very good at. Um, and then more kind of um, kind of simulation forecasting, machine learning, and so on, uh, statistical modeling. So we will try very hard to take these um, uh, these indicators of need really and make sure that we can offer uh, uh, adequate training programs. Certainly for the introductory to R, uh, what I'm planning to do is next year is to have at least one online training session for introduction to R, running one one per month through the entire year so that um, uh, this 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 kind of bar gets smaller and smaller just because we've we kind of meet that um, but there will be other things that we need to pick up from here as well and what do people use R for um, well obviously some people are not using it at the moment but repetition and data visualization and data wrangling uh, statistical modeling, these are the kind of the top few. And uh, uh, we think there's more we could do with repetition. So the people who are using R for automation, if you can really, sh if it would be great if you share your examples, you will be surprised how even the most mundane thing 
if you automate it, uh, actually would end up saving people a huge amount of time, really. If you're doing something which is saving you, say, five minutes a week, if you multiply that by a thousand, uh, imagine uh, other analysts, imagine how much total time would be saved uh, by, the, uh, by the analytics uh, workforce in the NHS. So please do share your, your, your examples of re repetition, really. Uh, what sources of support do people use for, uh, for when they want to learn about R? Um, so unsurprisingly, internet searching comes up uh, very high, and that's great. That's uh, um, almost all of us will, will do that. But you know, Twitter, colleagues, the NHSR website, um, uh, the webinars and the training courses, um, Stack Overflow is also a great place to go, and also the uh, the conference itself with the workshops and so on, user groups. So you can see there's a, ver a variety of sources people go to, and that's really great because there isn't a single right source to go to, and and, and each one of these has its kind of places, really. Um, now, two things that I think we, we need to work harder at in the NHSL community. Um, we asked people how often they use the website. Uh, so the majority of people didn't even know the website existed. So that's really for us to kind of address, really. Um, but but some people know about it and they, they kind of are, are a bit aware of it. So we need to kind of make this website a little bit more uh, relevant, really, and um, kind of design it to, so that it meets your needs more. Uh, uh, likewise, with the Slack channel, again, majority of people didn't know about Slack. So today's a shout out for Slack. You know, it's it's a... It's a very uh, it's a very active channel, uh, and there's lots of nice, friendly people to to give support to. Really, um, okay. And then I just wanted to give a, a, a quick feedback on the workshops uh, for today. Um, which workshops um, uh, were attended last week? You can see the list there again. It's great to see all this. And what was the rating of the workshops? Well, the average weighted was uh, rating was about four point five. So uh, really, really delighted with that with that feedback. And again, so I'd like to really thank the, the entire NHSR community, particularly uh, so many individuals in that, that it would be impossible to do justice to that now. But we do have support from from uh, from organizations, really. So our studio, Mango and Jumping Rivers, have always supported the conference. Uh, and without them, it would be difficult for us to, to kind of have some, many of the workshops and events that we do. So I'd like you to enjoy the conference. I'm sorry I've taken a little bit more time than I intended, uh, but I will kind of had, hand back now to to Anastasia, and perhaps there are questions that uh, that we might have time for, but uh, no worries if we don't. Thank Thanks, you, Mohammed. Anastasia. Thank you, Mohammed. Uh, well, we have very few questions, so one which is most popular one. Uh, let's try to answer this, and then we all need to go to the next session because Van Goldacre is waiting for us now. Uh, so, question from the audience: Are these training solutions available to organizations or individuals outside? No, so so the funding we have is really for the NHS and and care sector. So uh, the training solutions will be, and we try and make them free to the NHS uh, and the uh, and the, the kind of related sectors. But then they're, they're not available to uh, to organisations outside of those boundaries because that's what the funding was for. Okay, thank you, Mohammed. And also, can uh, we asked a question about recording? Yes, it's all will be on our YouTube page. And last question was about our health economics field. Uh, we don't really cover it them, uh, ourselves quite well, but there is, uh, I just sent the uh, reply, our for HTA um, uh, initiative, which is run by a few universities and a few health economists. And we have presentation from Gianluca Bayer on Wednesday, who, who got to talk about this. Um, and uh, yes, if there are no other questions, I'm quite conscious about time. Uh, we, will end, we will end the session here, and everyone, you can either go now yourself to session two using drop down menu on the top left corner, or hopefully you will be pulled uh, to the session automatically. Uh, we will see you there. Bye. Thanks, bye bye. Thank you.